Hey guys, um, this video is going to be on a couple different topics. Um, I'm going to talk about the new YouTube uh, rules, um, kind of like reaching out for more subscribers. Um, I'm going to talk about my new channel that I am launching and um, the main subject of the breastfeeding um, focus for the day. So number one, I wanted to talk about the, the YouTube changes. So YouTube now um, does no longer monetizes videos with, with um, channels under 1,000 subscribers. Currently I have 265, which I am actually very, sorry, I'm very proud of, um, and I will not stop making videos because they're not monetized. Because honestly, I haven't even made any money off of the videos that I've made so far. Um, I do these videos for you guys. I do them to reach out for you guys and to help you guys. And so it's not really about the money. It never has been. I always thought it would be nice um, little income if ever it did become something more, but it never has. Um, and it doesn't stop me. I do work now. Um, most of you know that. And so it has slowed down my making of videos, but um, not by a whole, whole lot because I think that my overall health has slowed down my videos from, from the past. So um, working maybe has changed a tad, but also, you know, we're talking about breastfeeding. It's just one subject. And so you don't always, like you're repetitious, basically. You're constantly talking about the same thing. Um, so that is just something I wanted to let you guys know. Um, would like to get my, I would like to get the subscribers up, um, but it has moved. I've been on YouTube, I think since about 2015, late 2015. So I've been on YouTube for quite a while and I only have 265. It doesn't surprise me just because like I said, it's like a one subject channel. Um, and it's basically one group of people, which would be pregnant women. Um, of course, I know there are some men out there that uh, follow, but it's probably not for the pregnant, um, not for the breastfeeding. They're hoping to see things that I don't post because I'm not a breastfeeding mom at the moment. Um, I breastfed in the past. So that was the number one. Number two, I'm launching a new channel. I used to, on this channel, incorporate a bunch of different variety of videos. Um, I dealt I still do, but I dealt with chronic pain, um, but I have a lot of chronic health issues. And so I was doing videos about that, which you probably still would find if you looked in my older videos. Um, but I decided things just got kind of crazy. And I really didn't want to have that on the same channel as my breastfeeding. I kind of wanted to separate them. I also didn't want it to be just about chronic illness. I want it to be um, a empowering channel um, a channel that for whatever reason a person might be going through a change and having to reroute their life, basically. And the new channel um, is going to be called The Meaning of Dawn. And of course, my name is Dawn, but the dawn is also the sunrise. And the sunrise is the beginning of a new day. And I wanted my channel to mean something, and I feel that every day is a new day and in that new day we can learn new things we can experience new things we can adjust our thinking we can be more reasonable whatever the case every day is new and fresh with no mistakes in it yet um, but also every day is different yesterday could have been a horrible day um, health-wise for me or it could be a horrible day just in general um, for anybody, um, but every day is a new day. And so I want my focus to be on my life after this, after being diagno diagnosed with these health issues, um, but how I can move on. And I'm still doing that and I'm still learning and I'm still trying to figure all that out. So I'm going to put a link. Um, well, I believe you might be able to find it on my channel, but I'll try to put a link to it in the description. So if you want to check it out and subscribe, feel free to do so. Um, again, some of you may already be subscribers 
from that portion and then I no longer made those videos so you weren't really following anymore. So maybe hopefully you will find interest in those videos. It's going to be very different. I'm hoping some vlog style, some sit down and some just like hauls and, and get ready with me and um, take you to work with me. Um, I don't know, shopping and different things. So um, I'm hoping that video will, or that channel will just be a variety of different things, um, just about life in general and me finding my new my new normal. Um, so, but for you guys today, this is going to be about nutrition for um, pregnant and breastfeeding women. Now, a lot of times a mom has asked me the question, you know, do I need to change my diet? Do I need to eat certain things when I'm breastfeeding? Do I need to stop eating certain things when I'm breastfeeding? Um, and Basically, you know, a lot of studies have shown, and I'm reading through notes, so bear with me as I look down at them, um, that even mothers who are malnutritioned can um, make milk and make milk that's suited for the baby because basically your body is going to take whatever that baby needs. It's going to take it from you and give it to the baby. So you're the one that suffers, um, sadly. But there are things that you can do to um, to help. Basically, what you eat is basic is for you. It's to make sure that you are healthy and strong, and and you know have energy and just you know feel that to be healthy. Um, just as a little FYI, I my voice is hoarse. I am not sick, but I know it is a little bit hoarse. I had surgery, so I had to have the tube down the throat so it's left like a sore throat and just kind of a hoarse voice um, but that's just on the side I just wanted you to know that um, so if you think about countries that are underdeveloped or third world countries their moms most of them breastfeed and they do not eat they don't have the nutrition that we have here and a lot of them are not well nourished but they're still able to provide good milk for the baby and so can you. Um, there are going to be times when your diet might be low in nutrients because you're ill or because you're traveling. So just knowing that this will not affect the quality of your breast milk. Um, you do need to eat a variety of foods um, to keep up, like I said, your energy level and your own good health because this basically, what you eat basically is for you. It's going to help you. So here are just some little guidelines. If you want to drink enough fluids, this can be um, water, milk, juice, soup, to keep from getting thirsty, um, especially water. It doesn't mean that you have to have water to make milk, but water is good for you because you will find yourself thirsty. Um, you want to limit coffee, pop, soda, um, to any type of drink that has caffeine. It could be tea. Um, that has caffeine to two servings or fewer a day. Um, sometimes caffeine can affect um, the baby. And caffeine is usually in their system for two to three days. So it can take a while to get out of their system. So you might notice if you're drinking caffeine that it makes them a little more fussy. They might even seem a little colicky. A lot of times that can be due to some caffeine. But caffeine is also not good for us in general to have uh, much more than two a day and of course fewer if possible. You want to limit or avoid alcoholic beverages. Um, there's so much information out there on alcohol and drinking so you want to make sure that you get accurate information. If you are going to drink it's always best to um, when you have a drink let it be after you right after you breastfed and that you have at least a few hours before you need to breastfeed again. And that's just for like one glass or two glasses of wine. But if you were to go all out and have a lot of drinks, then of course you probably want to pump a dump for a few hours or for a few feeds just to be on the safe side. Um, a lot of times mothers think that beer helps breastfeeding. Um, this is not true. Um, it does not help breastfeeding. It was an old wives tale, old myth. Um, 
so that's just something to know that that is not something that we recommend now. It was the yeast in the beer that I think people said, but it's just not something to recommend. If you do drink alcohol, we, we, like I said, we want you to limit yourself. Um, and it says here, no more than two to two and a half ounces of liquor, eight ounces of table wine, or two cans of beer on any one day, and even less for smaller women. So um, that is just kind of like a guideline. And then as well, like I said, when you would want to drink that and feed, how you would want to do that. So you'd want to feed before you drink, like right before you drink, and that way you have a few hours in between. Um, you want to enjoy the foods that you normally eat. Um, you may want to eat small, frequent meals um, and snacks, and you, want, you may want to have like snacks around the house where you can grab them easily, things that you can eat while you're feeding or while you're on the run because you will find yourself hungry and yet you might not have the time or the energy to always be cooking something, preparing something for yourself. So if you can have healthy snacks, that's really good. Um, you wanna eat enough food to help maintain milk production, of course, and to provide nutrients to the mother and to your baby. Um, Making breast milk burns extra calories, usually about 500 more calories a day. So eating enough food, you would at least want to hang around the 1,800 um, calories a day, at least. Um, more than that, of course, if possible, but you wouldn't want to go under that. Um, a lot of times there's that 1,200 calorie diet, um, and with the mommy breastfeeds, you would want to go 1,800. That's kind of what they base it off of. Um, so this is kind of the best guide um, for the first six weeks, um, you know, for moms, just until you kind of, you know, get your, your kind of get your own appetite back and, um, you know, just kind of figuring it out those first six weeks, it can be kind of tough. Um, babies are going to be exposed to the smells and tastes of the foods that you eat and that the family eats. And that's a good thing. Um, there's no re reason to avoid any particular type of food unless you su suspect that your baby may be sensitive to it and maybe the doctor would even um, maybe even confirm this. Um, but if you ever get to a point where you're literally eating nothing and the baby is still having issues, then it's not, most likely not your food, it's something else. It could be um, an overproduction of milk. It could be, um, you know, the baby has is not latching well and they're not getting the right kind of milk, that kind of thing. So that's just something to note. Um, so for eating moms, you want to have um, in your first and second and third trimester, you want to focus on fruits, eating two to two cups daily, so one cup of fruit or juice or a half a cup of dried food, fruit is some of the ideas of, some, you know, fruits that you can, or ways that you can get that fruit um, in your diet. In vegetables, you want to have two and a half cups daily, and you want to increase that to three cups if possible. Um, so this can be one cup of raw or cooked vegetables or two cups of raw leafy vegetables. So this could be salads and things like that. Um, eat more dark green and orange vegetables and cooked dry beans. Those you can do, um, that will help a lot. Um, in your grains, in the grains part of your, um, your diet, you would wanna have six ounces daily or eight, and eight ounces daily. So six ounces daily, would be like your first trimester and you could increase that to eight ounces daily. One ounce is one slice of bread, just to give you an idea. One cup of ready to eat cereal or a half a cup of pasta rice or cereal. So that would be um, one ounce. So um, you wanna choose whole grains instead of refried grains. Um, so that's something to so then that would be your grains. Now your protein, you would want to choose low fat or lean. Um, you would want five to five and a half, five point five 5.5 ounces daily 
of protein at, in your first trimester and about six and a half ounces daily during your second and third trimester. So again, this is baby's getting older, the baby's gonna need more um, food, so you're gonna need to eat a little bit more. Um, so one ounce, to give you some ideas, would be one ounce of lean meat, poultry, fish. Um, it could be one egg, it could be a fourth a cup of dry beans, it could be a half an ounce of nuts, or it could be a tablespoon of peanut butter. All of that would equal one ounce of protein. So you can kind of gauge an idea. And again, this is on moms who are pregnant. Um, the last would be your dairy. So they recommend three cups daily through all three trimesters. So one cup would be one cup of milk. It could be eight ounces of yogurt. It could be uh, one and a half ounces of cheese or two ounces of processed cheese. Of course, you want to avoid that if possible. Go low fat or fat free when you choose milk, yogurt, and cheese. Now, this is something that is controversial, so you may hear this a little bit different. And I, I think I'm for full fat is better than low fat because what they take out, the fat that they take out, they replace it with sometimes sugars or some other type of chemical. So um, I wouldn't necessarily go low fat or fat free, but you could go, I mean, low fat, like 2% milk, I guess would be okay. Um, but you could do some more research on that. But I would say as a pregnant or breastfeeding mom, there's nothing wrong with going full fat on your dairy. Um, milk, cheese, yogurt, there's really nothing wrong with that. So that is for moms who are pregnant. Now, how much of that changes um, when you are breastfeeding. So let's look. So basically with your fruits, it's exactly the same. With your vegetables, it's three cups daily. Um, and then your grains is where it changes a little bit. It's eight ounces daily for breastfeeding only and seven ounces daily if it's, if you're breastfeeding and you're formula feeding. So you wanna go a little bit lower. Um, the protein is six and a half ounces with breastfeeding only and six ounces for if you're partially breastfeeding. So you're giving formula as well. And then your dairy is the same, it's three cups daily. So those are some recommendations um, about nutrition. Another um, important thing to talk about is weight gain during pregnancy and what is normal. Uh, many doctors will suggest that you um, gain weight at the following rate, one to four pounds during your first trimester, two to four pounds a month during second and third trimesters. Women um, at a healthy weight should gain about 25 to 35 pounds. Um, nutritional needs, you need folic acid. Uh, it's a B vitamin and you can get this through enriched grain products like breakfast, cereals, bread, pasta, rice, um, dark leafy green vegetables, beans, citrus fruit. Also iron is another thing that you need when you're pregnant and you can usually get this through your meats, your iron fortified breakfast cereal, beans, leafy, dark green leafy vegetables, and dried fruits. Fruits. So you've got, you need your folic acid, which is a B vitamin, and you need iron. Um, you do want to be careful of things like listeria, toxoplasma, and mercury. Listeria is usually found in ready-to-eat foods. Um, sometimes it can be found in fruits and vegetables, um, raw meat, unpasteurized milk and milk products, deli meats, hot dogs, and soft cheeses. Um, you do not want to consume unpasteurized juice or milk. Uh, make sure that it says pasteurized milk. Throw away food that's past its expiration date and reheat hot dogs and luncheon meats until steaming hot. So you don't want to eat those directly out of the fridge. Toxoplasma is, most people know, um, a parasite that causes an infection that can be passed to an unborn baby. Um, and this is usually spread through undercooked meat, unwashed fruits and vegetables, and in cat feces. So that's one of the reasons why you avoid changing cat litter. Um, how to prevent those things is to wash your hands after touching any type of sand, any type of soil, any type of raw meat or unwashed vegetables. Um, you want to wash and peel off fruits and vegetables before eating them and have someone else change the cat's litter box. Um, mercury, it can, of course, cause nervous system issues in an unborn child. 
or a young baby, so you want to avoid fish that's high in mercury. So you don't want to eat shark, swordfish, king mackerel, and tilefish while they have the highest levels of mercury. You want to limit the low mercury fish, which most people know is tuna, um, salmon, catfish, and pollock. And I think tuna is probably like the number one biggest one that moms are aware of. Um, so that's something as a pregnant mom that you want to think about. Really doesn't matter whether you're pregnant or you're not pregnant. You want to think about that. Now, weight loss while breastfeeding, it's best. Um, breastfeeding is best, of course, and it will help you to lose your weight. Um, and following the MyPlate um, plan will really help a lot. So if you go to myplate.gov, you should be able to um, see what that plan is and choose the right amounts of foods. Um, of course, unless your doctor advises against it, you do want to have some type of physical activity, at least 30 minutes or more a day um, or most days of the week. You can break that down really into 10 minute cycles um, to fit into your schedule. So you can take a 10 minute walk every day or um, maybe four or five times a day or three to four times or th five, four to five times a week or three to four, you know, just depending any, any amount that you can fit in unless your doctor says something different. Um, you will need to increase uh, fluid while you're breastfeeding, just again, because you will find that you are thirstier um, and you might find that you become dehydrated a little bit more because um, your body is using all of that. So try to have a bottle of water um, near you at all times to, to drink. Um, food safety, we kind of talked about it a little bit with the pregnant, but they do talk about like washing your hands, of course, and the services, separating um, your foods from each other so you don't get cross-contamination, cooking at proper temperatures, and chilling or refrigerating promptly. Um, things that, that are high risk, we talked about as unpasteurized milk cheeses, juices, raw or undercooked seafood or meat, poultry eggs, and raw sprouts. So just like bre uh, pregnancy, breastfeeding women should avoid their intake on mercury as well. Um, so let's just end it with breastfeeding um, benefits. For a mom, you burn extra calories, so you lose pregnancy weight faster. Um, it saves you time and money that is spent on buying and preparing formula and it allows regular time for you to relax and to bond with your baby, which that can happen either way, but that's something they put in. Baby, it provides good nutrition for your baby that's easier to digest than formula. Um, it contains antibodies that help your baby fight off viruses and bacteria, and then just having that physical closeness is really good for both you and for your baby. Not just um, your baby, you know, they, they like the security of it, but it can also, also help regulate um, mom's hormones, it can help the baby's um, temperature and heart. So that is the video today. It is a little bit longer one, but it's just basically on um, nutrition, you know, good nutrition for a breastfeeding mom um, or a pregnant mom. So I hope this video uh, uh, helps you. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to make sure that you're subscribed to any videos I put out and that you hit the notification bell so that you um, are notified when I receive, or when I put out a, um, a video. And don't forget to check the new um, channel that I have and um, share my uh, channels with your friends and family, um, especially those that might be breastfeeding or, can, or might find the other channel, maybe they're dealing with chronic health issues, whatever they might be, might find that channel encouraging. I hope so anyway. Uh, I will have some links below to the information that I shared for you. Most of it is from myplate.gov. So I will put that down below so that you have that information to go do your own research. You guys have a great day and I will see you in my next video.